This lesson will cover Unit 3, Topics 1 to Topics 4. Let's start with basics. Energy is the currency that keeps an ecosystem running. And since there's a limit to the amount of energy in an ecosystem, there is a limit to the number of organisms that, that ecosystem can support. An individual wins the game when they reproduce and their offspring reproduce. That is the goal. And species have involved different strategies to meet those conditions. Today, we're going to talk about some of those different strategies. So let's have a quick review. A specialist species is a species with a narrow niches and very specific requirements. They're extremely good at what they do, but they're very vulnerable to change because they have such specific requirements. They're the first to go due to habitat loss and disturbances and often the first to become extinct. Generalist species are species with broad niches that can use a wide array of habitats and resources. They're able to live in many different places. They tend to be more adaptable to disturbances. And there's an example of a specialist and a generalist. Population growth models. So if we look at the scientific model, it's a mathematical formula that can be used to predict future outcomes. They can be simple or very complex. Population growth models is a mathematician's model that helps to predict a population size at a specific time. In population ecology, we have two basic models. We have the exponential growth model, which is often referred to as a J-curve, and we have a logistic growth model, which is often referred to as an S-curve. Growth rate is the number of individuals born during a period of time minus the number of individuals that have died during that same time period, so births minus deaths. Intrinsic growth rate is the maximum potential growth of a population under ideal conditions. So if we go to that exponential growth rate, the formula is here. We won't use a, the formula a whole lot. It tells us what all these things mean. But our assumptions are that there's no limit on resources. So there's unlimited food, water, shelter. It occurs under ideal conditions. And based on these assumptions, populations can grow quite rapidly. It creates this J-shaped curve. If we look at the logistic growth model, this model factors in a carrying capacity, which is symbolized by the uppercase letter K. It's the limit on how many individuals an ecosystem can support. There's a much more complicated equation, which we don't need to actually solve in this course, but the assumptions are still important. There's a limit to the number of individuals that can be supported by whatever the environment is, whether it's food, water, habitat. The population's growth will slow as it approaches K, the K being that carrying capacity. Small populations can at first experience rapid growth, which is that exponential growth, but then it will level off into that S-shaped curve. It's used to predict populations affected by density-dependent limiting factors. So let's take a look at carrying capacity, which is that K. The maximum number of individuals from a specific species that an ecosystem can support indefinitely. So not a short term, but over the long term. It's not a fixed value. It can change based on changes in the productivity of the ecosystem, things like drought, harsh weather, good growing year. So if there's a lot of ample food, perhaps it can be support more and the carrying capacity will increase. If there's drought, perhaps they will, uh, the carrying capacity would be reduced. Because of this, it's possible for a population to overshoot their carrying capacity. And in fact, that is quite common where you have almost too many and then they sort of die off. They go below the carrying capacity, they grow back up and then they die back off again. When this happens, resources are depleted at an unsustainable rate. Disease can also spread faster and there's increased conflict um, due to competition. And all of these could lead to a severe or catastrophic die off. This is a really famous set of data that was collected of hair and lynx. It was done by looking at the pelts from a store. So these were both hunted and then the pelts were sold in a trading store. So we have long term data from 1850 up to 1925. And they started looking at how many rabbit pelts, rabbit furs were sold, uh, which is that blue population. And then they, they also were hunting and trapping and selling lynx uh, pelts. And you can see as you follow along that when the rabbit population gets high, the lynx population follows right behind that. And when the rabbit population drops off, the lynx population follows that. And then the rabbit population, because the lynx are low, the rabbit population climbs, the lynx population is also gonna climb, rabbits down, the lynx are down, the rabbits are gonna come back up. And they do sort of 
follow each other in sort of a in sort of a symmetry based on sort of supply and demand of the lynx eating the rabbits. Now keep in mind the lynx will eat other uh, organisms, not just the rabbits, but it's a it's a pretty solid relationship. Um, and this was interesting data because it's long term data and large quantities of animals. Let's look at some reproductive strategies. So remember to win the game, an individual must reproduce and their offspring must reproduce. Organisms have come up with countless ways to achieve this, but we can usually lump all of them into two different groups. We can have K-selected and we can have R-selected. It's important to know that many species have strategies that are not K or R, and in some cases they can change based on conditions. So there are a group of organisms that don't fit into these two categories. This just covers um, a large number of organisms. So let's look at K-selected first. Two species that are K-selected tend to have low intrinsic growth rates, low biotic potential. They tend to be larger organisms. They grow slow, they're larger. They have populations close to the carrying capacity. They produce a few offspring that are well to care for. They're expensive offspring. They put a lot of energy into raising their young. Uh, they reach sexual maturity later in life. And here are some examples of case-selected species. Our selected species are species uh, that are are selected, there's a typo there, tend to have a high intrinsic growth rate and high biotic potential. They're smaller body, so they grow fast, they're smaller, they have a lot of young, and they provide little care. They're cheap offspring, so they're not investing a lot of energy in there. They reach sexual maturity early, and they really exist close to the carrying capacity. They overshoot, they get a whole bunch of them, then there's a die-off, and then there's a whole bunch more, and then there's a die-off. And so many forms of insects are R selected. So let's take a look and compare these two, R and selected organisms. So R selected, um, they can be in an unstable environment, small size of organisms, the energy used to make individuals is low, many offspring are produced, early maturity, short life expectancy, each individual produce, reproduces only once, density independent, and they follow that type three survivorship curve. And then case selected, uh, just better in a stable environment, there's a larger size of the organisms. The energy it uses to make its individuals is high. Less offspring are produced, late maturity, long life expectancy. Uh, individuals re reproduce more than once, and it's density dependent, and they follow type 1 or type 2. And, and we tend to categorize this more as type 1, with that type 2 sort of falling in the middle. So let's take a look at these survivorship curves. They're characterized as type 1, type 2, and type 3. It's a graph showing the number or proportion of individuals surviving it to each age for a given species or group. It's plotted on um, log paper, which helps turn the proportional change into a linear relationship. There's three types. There's type one, which humans are the example of. Species have high survival through most of its life. They start to die off rapidly once they start reaching old age, and they are referred to as a case-selected species. Type two are species that have a relatively constant decline in survivorship as time moves on. Some of them um, are case selected or, or we can sort of leave it to be either one. They're definitely not R selected at all. So type two really falls in the middle, but they tend to have more of the qualities of case selected than R selected. And type three species have low survivorship early on. As time goes on, survivorship increases or a few individuals remain. They produce a lot of offspring. So type three is something like uh, acorns off of an oak tree, or dandelions, or insects. Type 2 are mice or birds with a little bit of parental care, um, but not a lot. So to recap, we can use different population growth models to predict how a population will change over time. Two such models are the exponential growth and the log logarithmic growth models. Case-selected species invest a lot of resources into a few young. Our selected species have a lot of offspring and invest very little resources into each. Survivorship curves that can be used to predict the likelihood an organism survives for a specific age, and we classify these curves as type 1, type 2, or type 3.